Sometimes as a logo designer, you may find it difficult to discover ideas or to trust that your work is good or even to produce good work. Not to mention those moments when you have to explain why your logo is the go-to choice. Well, I think semiotics is that obvious secret sauce that logo designers don't know enough about. And this one might help you solve every problem that I mentioned. People don't speak enough about it, so I will try to fill that gap for you guys. Let's get into it. When you simply walk on the streets or when you watch television, you see three types of signs. There are icons which directly imitate objects, indexes which are like traces of those objects, and symbols which stand for those objects. They are difficult to understand at first, so let's dive deeper. Let's imagine you've been living alone in another country for three months and one day when you get back from work you suddenly have a toothache. You are on an unknown street, almost desperate, in pain, but you are lucky enough to see a logo featuring a tooth lighted up across the street and you instantly think there's a dentist who will help you with your problem. Problem. You don't know if it's a successful dentist or if he is experienced or any other detail about him, but you are almost certain that there's a dentist. That is an icon, my friends. It is a visual representation that shows the exact same thing that it represents. They're called signifier and signified, but I won't get into theoretical details in this video. Other example may be a picture of you, because it looks like you, it is an icon. Icons are really easy to understand and they transcend cultures most of the times because of their general character. That would be an advantage. That is why most dentists use a tooth as a logo, for example. A tooth is a tooth for every human being, right? But does that mean we should all design logos using teeth when working for dentists? No. And here comes the disadvantage of icons used as logos. They are generic. Every big branding specialist speaks about the importance of standing out and being different than the competition. Well, icons will do the exact opposite most of the time. Washing machine icons for cleaning service businesses are not helping those entities succeed succeed in their field. Those logos are too generic and lack personality. But what about the second category of signs? Let's get back to our example of you being in a foreign country, maybe on a different continent in a totally different environment with people from another culture. In this sunny day, it's lunchtime and you forgot your meal at home. You go out to find a tasty restaurant and after 5 minutes of walking, you see this logo of a hungry face that looks like it craves for something good to eat. You guess it's a restaurant, but you're not sure. That is an index, something caused by the thing it makes you think about. The craving face is an indexical sign for being hungry, smoke is an indexical sign for fire, traces of wheels are an indexical sign for cars, and so on. Indexes used as logos are great because they have this suggestive character. They make you think of something without being it but rather by being the clues, like a cause and effect relationship. And usually the effect of brands is something good, right? Happiness, in general, or a result, the desired one. They can help a brand stand out by showing good clues indicating those desired results. Their problem as logos is that they're not for the masses or not for every context. You don't get them instantly. It's the kind of logo that you have to analyze at least for a few minutes to feel or understand the message or the story. With such logos, as a designer, you have to find the right balance between smart and too smart. That's not easy, which makes me think about the third category of signs. But before that, since you've watched this video so far, I want to thank you. And if you found this information helpful, please help us get to more people by subscribing to this channel. It means a lot to me. Now let's get back to the third category of signs. Maybe you want to send an important document or souvenir to your family really fast, but being in a different country, you have to find a fast delivery company. Obviously. You search for this service on Google and you run into various brands. You search again a few hours later and you notice two right-oriented arrows in a logo. This has to mean they're fast, right? Now, don't get me wrong, I know not everyone picks a company like that, but I created those examples to help you remember the concepts by using stories. And this story is a good example of the power of symbols, which are signs that stand for the thing they are representing without being them or their result without having a physical connection. The Nike logo is the symbol of victory. The green light stands for go. A star is the symbol of dreams. By using them, we can create more different logos for different brands. They are very versatile. I can use a snapping finger symbol for a car washing service, for a transport company or for a fast food restaurant. What's the minus here? Well, symbols are not universal. For example, the sign that you make with your fingers by touching your index and your thumb may mean just fine to you or okay, but in Brazil this is just like 
the middle finger. The snake is a symbol associated with lies and evil by the Christians, but in other cultures it stands for fertility, immortality and rebirth. Now that we understand each category of signs and the pros and cons of using them as logos, let's make sure we know how to distinguish them. Take a look at those three different signs that represent fire. I'll give you a moment to identify the icon, the index and the symbol. Great, an iconic sign for fire is this one, which imitates fire. It looks like it. This one is an index because it doesn't look like fire, but it rather gives us a clue for fire. And this one may be considered as a symbol of fire by some of us because we as humans created this convention of ours that this symbol can stand for fire. It doesn't look like fire at all and it is not something caused by fire. You can use those three types of signs in your day-to-day -day logo design process to do better work and create that magical logo you've always wanted to make. Find out how by watching this video right here.